policy position on uh, improving the foster care system. This really is a state of practice and demands a hands-on response from every government. So uh, I appreciate having the city of Portland resources there to help work on important packages that I predict will be introduced to improve resources for foster parents as well as uh, other issues related to kids aging. Mayor, um, Commissioner Fish. Could, could our team remind <coughs> remind us and by extension the public of what the calendar is? So um, we we're about to adopt a pretty bold agenda, both in terms of priorities and policy positions, and then we're going to unleash our crack team to go out in DC and Salem to advance this agenda. Could you remind us what the calendar is? You, uh, you're reading my next notes. This is perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so we'll be back in Salem next month. Uh, for organizational days. Those are three days when committees will meet similar to legislative days, but it's also when we'll see live bills. So that will begin on January 14th. What's different this coming session is that the legislature has actually moved up the start time. So it used to be that we would have organizational days, we'd see the first round of bills, and over the course of a long session, we typically see around 2,800 bills. The first big lump is all park 700 bills coming in. And so we'd have two to three weeks to review, send those out to uh, bureaus and council offices for the first round of input. This time around, uh, we'll have organizational days on the 14th, uh, and then we'll have the start of session on January 22nd. So just a week later, there was no downtime uh, between organizational days when we first started seeing bills in the beginning of session. Session will run uh, constitutionally, it's limited to 160 days. And part of the reason why the legislature moved it up was so that they could complete the entirety of uh, that time before the 4th of July holiday. So uh, right now, section 30th is the constitutional signing die. It's when they have to be out. Um, on the federal side, we'll be heading back to D.C. at the end of January uh, as well to do some lobbying, some hill visits, uh, some work with agencies, and work with uh, leaders from across the country that are um, coming in for U.S. Conference of Mayors. So we'll be uh, off like a shot in the new year. Very good. I will entertain a motion to accept the so report of the federal legislative and regulatory agenda. I do a motion mm -hmm. second. And I'd also like to put the state legislative agenda on the table. Second. I mean, so I move. Motion and a second. Carla, with regard to the federal legislative <coughs> and regulatory agenda, please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Wheeler, first of all, for uh, doing the town hall with me, and thank you to that 75% of people who came to it. Uh, it was really an excellent uh, input session, and I appreciate that you have adjusted the, the agendas to reflect what we heard. So if anybody's interested in that, you can go to the blog on my website, and I've got it nicely highlighted, like who uh, was it color-coded as to what was already in there, what was added, etc. So it's, it's really clear. Thank you, Nils Tolstrom, for your work on the federal agenda and for all the cross-country travel that you do. Um, and I uh, really feel good about having our delegation in Washington. Now that they do the right thing to the best of their ability in these challenging times. I, I want to thank the Office of Government Relations and, and our <coughs> superb team of professionals who every year outperform in a very tough environment. I want to thank the mayor and Commissioner Fritz for leading the town hall and soliciting additional public feedback. I want to thank you, Elizabeth, for the uh, changes you've made to strengthen both, both agendas. And uh, I look forward, along with my colleagues, to being tapped strategically to do some uh, you know, meetings with legislators either in Salem or Washington or both. Thank you for all of your <coughs> I just want to thank you in advance for all the uh, long hours you're going to be working over at least the, uh, the next six, seven, eight, nine months. So uh, we know how hard you work in Salem and in D.C. So thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, I appreciate the great work that you've all done on this, and I appreciate our federal lobbying team in Washington, D.C. as well. I'm hopeful that the next Congress will prioritize more investments in housing, particularly very low-income housing and infrastructure. 
Local governments, of course, have been bearing the brunt of disinvestment since the 1980s. The support for low-income housing through HUD has declined by nearly 85%, and that means that the city has been prioritizing these efforts that need to <coughs> people in our community. And so uh, we certainly look forward to a more productive partnership with our federal partners to help those in our community and frankly communities all across the nation who need that support to be successful in their communities. The city is going to continue to meet the challenges put forward by this administration, including the stripping of environmental protections, governing clean air and water removing protections for the most vulnerable members of our community and retreating from the global threat of climate change. Finally, I'm very eager to continue to work with the EPA and other parties around the Portland Harbor Superfund cleanup. Commissioner Fish and I have expressed to the EPA how important it was to provide as much certainty in the process as possible to facilitate other parties in stepping up the plate. We also need an open and transparent process that encourages strong community involvement. And we're very supportive of the EPA's effort to get things moving as quickly as possible. I'm pleased to vote aye on this agenda.